What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today we're going to be checking out Nowhere Profit. Uh, kind of like an FTL meets, I don't know. It's a game, it's got card based combat, but at the same time it's a game about leading a caravan across post-apocalyptic wastes at the behest of like a star or a robot that's fallen from the stars. I think it's going to be a pretty cool title, and so I wanted to check it out with all of you here today. Let's go ahead and check out Nowhere Profit, new game time. A star fell from the heavens. In whispered words coming from the dark night sky, it told me where it would land. It took me weeks to cross through Soma's wilderness, avoiding famished raiders and raving mad machines turned hostile by the crash. Most of my food and water was gone by the time I finally laid eyes on it. It looked unassuming. A dull gray sphere scorched and cracked, but still brimming with energy. Hissing with the heat, the sand around it had turned into glass. I had spoken to machines before, and made them do my bidding, but none had been this powerful, this keen. But it was dying. With flickering blue light, it painted a mandala of reverence into the dusty air. In this fractal sigil, I could see glimpses of ancient knowledge from before the crash, and then it spoke to me. This world is lost, my care, safety, and knowledge, in the crypt. To help all, you lead them. I could see a key and a map etched in hard light. I knew now how to find and open the crypt, a place only mentioned in rumors and spoken of in legends. Within it lay unlimited powers, all our ancient knowledge and the hope for a better world. As the light slowly subsided, I could hear words of prayer and mantras spoken all around me. Others must have seen the trail of fire and heard the star's whispers and followed it there too. Their eager faces told me that they had heard the machine speak to me. The prophet, they chanted. And so I had gained my followers, and together, we would find the crypt. So there it is. Uh, we are Ella. These are all of our little followers right here. We've got what appears to be a card deck of some kind. Here you can find your battle-ready followers. On the left is an overview over all your cards, and on the right you can see your current deck. Click on a card to either add or remove it from your deck. The filter settings and deck statistics at the bottom will help you decide who to add or remove. You currently have no new followers to add to the deck. You can check out those that are in your deck by clicking the button down below. Okay. And so, pretty much everybody is in my deck right now that I can tell. I assume that's going to be the cost to play them, that's going to be their damage, and that's going to be their health as we go forward. We'll probably want to use the stronger riders and stuff like that in order to get stuff done, but it also looks like they've got special abilities and whatnot. Very cool. I like the art style of this game. This is very pretty. It also shows you your deck balance right there with uh, your mana cost, I guess, as we would call it in other games like Hearthstone and so on and so forth. Uh, we've got Heal Leader, Fully Rested, Inspect the Convoy. So what's up with our convoy? No items to display. Okay, so we've got nothing inside of our convoy right now. What is this right here? You can learn more about yourself. See the cards you bring to battle and the equipment you're using. Unfortunately, you can either have neither to experience to level up or equipment to use. Come back later and improve your leader deck. Okay, cool. Let's leave the camp then. Good work, my prophet. Our people are safe again. However, some of your followers may have suffered wounds. The overview at the bottom shows you how heavily. You may also want to take this time to check your deck. Simply click on the cards at the bottom of the screen to inspect and edit your convoy deck. Okay, so the basic way that this works is I think the actual tutorial is a little messed up right now. Where I played the tutorial before, but it froze up in the middle. And so... I think it just resumed where it left off, even though I made a new game. The way that this basically works, from how I understand it, is we want to get over to this stone right here. Uh, there's battles along the way. And so what we can do is we can travel. Now, the highways that are wider are faster and also cost us less resources to travel. But the ones that are thinner tend to have more interesting stuff. This is the home of a skilled teacher. Let's go there. Let's see what's going on with the skilled teacher. Just off the road, we encounter two figures who sat in the dust. They held up empty bowls, their blank expression and hollow cheeks indicating that they were close to starvation. One of them is an old woman with tangled hair and cloudy eyes, the other a young girl that was almost naked except for a few rags. Uh, join us? As we take decisions, our convoy will increase or weaken their faith in a certain mindset, believer, scholar, or altruist. With high enough scores in one of these mindsets, you have access to unique options and situations you may encounter. Okay. Uh, we indicated to them to climb onto the wagons. The old woman shooed the young girl towards us, but stayed behind too weak to travel. She waved goodbye while the girl just stared ahead in a catatonic state. So we've got survivors right here that we've picked up along the way, which are denoted at the top of the screen. And then we got one to altruist. Let's continue forward. So our faith is going down along with our food. We're in Jashalem. So we can visit the teacher and learn new cards. 
Here you can start learning new cards. You can invest more to turn over more cards to make sure you find the right one for your own deck. Uh, we can start learning, I guess. And so for zero energy, we can turn over a card. So there it is. Select a card or turn over a second. So we've got Armored Blow. That's going to cost us five to do our next. A convenient cover so we can spawn an obstacle. That might be helpful. And we've only got ten energy left, so I don't know if it's going to be worth it to flip another one. I deal two damage to the target if your leader has one armor. Deal four damage instead. Ooh. I'll probably go with that for right now. So we'll take Armored Blow. I don't want to spend too much resources. And so the teacher has taught us everything that they know. I guess we'll go back. The game is wonderfully animated. It's amazing that I've never heard of this title. But it looks really good. Like, I found this just in a mine... Like, an absolute mineshaft slash pile of other indie games that were kind of just like, eh. And I saw this one. I was like, that looks sort of interesting. So I figured I'd give it a go. But man, it, it looks good. This looks almost like a AAA title. So we've got the Holy Guard who can taunt. What happens when I pick these guys right here? It looks like maybe I can just add them to my deck, possibly. Did it remove anything else from my deck when I did that? Or is that just something that, like, I can have as many cards in my deck as I want? Oh, I can have 30. Okay. We can have 30 cards to a deck. And so we'll probably want to have a pretty good split of allies along the way. Let's leave the camp and see what happens as we go further into the game. There's a dead end over here. It's a crossroads. I'm going to make sure that we're always moving towards our goal at the bare minimum. Vulturers were circling in the sky, and so we move forward cautiously. We came upon vile scenery, a large pack of gram dogs that were feasting on carcasses and fighting amongst themselves for the tastiest bits. Let's do combat. I think we've earned it. A fight. Ready yourself. Yeah, it says another fight right here. It froze in the middle of my last fight. You can click on one of the cards to adjust your convoy or leader date before we can face our enemy. Or if you're ready, just jump into the fray. The game is in development right now, in case you were wondering. So, I think our deck is good. Let's do this thing. Defend the convoy. In battle, you need to play your cards. They cost momentum, which is refilled and increased by one at the start of each turn. Many of your cards are followers, which, if played, can join the fight on your side, but be careful, they may die in battle. To win, you need to attack and reduce the enemy leader to zero health while avoiding that same fate. Be aware that any damage to your leader takes remains even after combat. Okay. So we've started out. Our starting hand right there. Uh, we started out with some pretty cheap units. I'm going to go ahead and confirm. A nice little variation right there. I don't know what the rocks do, but maybe if you put your guys on them, it'll work out well. Oh, we got three momentum right there. We've got the wild hand. I'm going to play her... I wonder what those mean right there. Maybe that she can be attacked? I don't know. I'll put her in right there and she spawned an ally. A proud warrior. Followers enter combat exhausted and can't act immediately. Starting with your next turn, this follower will refresh and be able to attack or move. You can see your follower has two sets of numbers, their attack and their health. Once a follower's health reaches zero, they are destroyed. When fighting, your follower's positions are critical. Only units in the front of each row can attack and be attacked. Oh, okay. That makes sense, I guess, then. Can I attack? Is that a thing that I can do, or is that basically the end of my turn? It looks like I can't really do much with my character, so let's end our turn. Uh, it's going to play a Gram Rager right there, Raging for a Gram. I know how that goes. And a Black Scale Gram on that side. Oh, wow, that's a lot of enemies. Yikes. Ready to fight. Your warrior is ready. Select the yellow triangle symbolizing that. To attack, drag one onto an enemy unit, but where enemy units will deal damage to your follower in retaliation. You can always attack the enemy leader directly. Doing this, your unit does not suffer any retaliation damage. Okay, you can drag your follower on an empty slot on your side to move. However, each follower can only take one action and gets exhausted. Okay. So she can't really attack right now. But this guy can. But he's going to take damage back if he does. So there's two health right there. That seems like a reasonably decent trade to me. So we'll trade one for one right there on a free unit. Then we'll move up. We've got four mana ready to go. So another fall. Oh, I should have played that first because when that one died, he would have got a plus one, plus one. Okay. Give all friendly followers plus one. I'm going to go with this guy right here. So there it is. And we'll end our turn. So a rabid lizard is up. That one's going to move. They're challenging us. The new follower has taunt. This keyword changes what and what, who you can attack. So a unit with taunt is in the front row. They become the only available target. No other followers nor the leader can be attacked until all other followers have been destroyed. Okay, gotcha. I figured it was probably somewhat similar to uh, Magic the Gathering in that regard. They're going to go out and they're going to hit me for a damage right there. We've got Scratch going out for one damage, unfortunately. We're at five out of five. I'm going to go with the Shiram Crusader right there to give everybody a plus one. 
So there it is. We've got plus ones out here. It looks like I can only attack right there, and whoever attacks is going to die, so I guess that's just the way the cookie crumbles. Uh, we lost a follower. That's okay. I'm going to attack right there because it seems like a decent plan, and that guy is exhausted and can't attack. But we can draw a leader card if we pull him in. We don't really have a leader card, so... Let's go ahead and put the Wanderer up front to taunt and end the turn. Another struck home and left the beast dead in the dirt. The remains of the pack turned tail and ran off. Uh, let him be. We don't have to worry about him for right now. So we got some meat, which is 17 food. And we got bones, which are apparently good for energy. Okay, when the last of the beasts are slain and had fled, we could finally move on. We pushed the large carcasses, perhaps belonging to some of Soma gigantic herbivores, into the ditch and moved on. Sounds good to me. So I'm here. Okay. That's a crossroads, and that's a crossroads. Both seem to be about the same, so why stress about it? We'll pick one and do our thing. We were going quietly down the track, and we heard fierce noises. Out of nowhere, beasts attacked us. Okay, well, let's do another combat. I enjoyed that. I thought that was pretty fun. Uh, losing your cards permanently when they die is kind of scary, but, like, you know, it is what it is. You draw one card of each start. Yeah, we don't have any leader cards, I don't think, though. Oh, we do. We do have leader cards. Okay, we got Lucky Shot. And then we've got Blast. Ooh, very nice. Okay, I'll confirm it. Uh, these seem a little expensive over here. So we'll confirm whatever we get. That's much better. I like that a little bit better. Okay. So we can play Lucky Shot right here. I think we probably want to play Leader Cards a little bit more aggressively this time around. Let's go with a... Shiram Defender right there. I wonder if that works only when she's played. I probably should have played her last. That's the way that it goes. But we'll find out in just a minute. We've got a Black Scale Jiram right there, a Jeroon Climber. We've got Scratch going out to one of our characters right there. It's unfortunate. Not my favorite thing that's ever happened. But I can fire off a Quick Shot right there for one mana. So I'm going to do that. And then I can do a Lucky Shot right there, which I'm going to do. I'm trying to keep the enemy somewhat fractured for right now and deal a little bit of damage. So with four mana, draw a Convoy card. Okay, hopefully it's not a Scratch. If it is, that's really going to hurt. Uh, the Giram Rager is back out. A Jeroon Climber is back out. And that looks like it's going to be a nice little job for adjacency. Uh, we've got Blast right here. I'm going to play that. There we go. Perfect. That's exactly what I like to see. That did cost us a little bit. But... If I can stay on point here, I bet that one's going to attack over here. and We're going to lose that follower. Ooh, a Janwar Bear. Okay, I wonder what Charge does. Probably means they can ignore Taunt if they want to. It said at the beginning of this game, you guys didn't get to see it, but at the beginning of the game it said expect to fail. So there's a kill right there. We've got a little bit of mana going around. I'm going to do one damage to all... Ooh. Yeah, go ahead and headbutt that fool. There it is. Done. So we've got victory on that side. 19 food and 2 bones. Very good. The broken bodies of the beasts surround us, and we were lucky to be alive. I like this game a lot, actually. I'm having fun with this. I'm a big fan of card games. I don't, in general, play a lot of, like, uh... Ooh, we've got domes over here? It's difficult terrain, so it'll take longer. Oh, we can't get over there unless we back travel. Let's back travel. We've gotten a bunch of bonus food. Why worry about it? After another long day on the road, we came to an end, and when a spotter pointed out a large shape off the path, it was a giant blood tree with its enormous branches stretching into the sky. We reached it after a while, and there was enough space in between its titanic red roots to set up camp. We slept well, and were guarded by an ancient spirit. Okay. And we got a bunch of food, so that's perfect. So what's up with these domes right here? Our scouts have reported that we were near a larger structure that was also marked on the map. We could drive our vehicles right up to it and gaze at an assembly of large geodesic domes, or geodesic domes, that were connected to each other. There was a breathtaking amount of plant life growing both around and inside the buildings. A slightly more sturdy tower stood in the middle of the domes. We can sense inside. Let's maybe go in? We entered into the compound through one of the larger domes doors. The air was very humid. We had to hack our way through the undergrowth. Quite a few of these plants might be edible. Perhaps we can just harvest some food and move on. Explore further. We pushed through the undergrowth towards the central structure. Behind a door that quickly gave way to some mild violence was a larger and almost empty chamber. On its other side, opposite to the entrance, we could see red lights flashing. It was dim in the room, but next to the lights, several turrets were mounted with energy weapons. Uh, we'll leave. I don't want to kill anybody off on accident. 
Uh, we can check our convoy status right here. We've got some bones. I assume that we can use these. Oh, we sell them for batteries. Gotcha. Cool. Sounds good to me. I was hoping that this place would actually be a shop of some kind, but I guess we're just not that lucky for right now. Our followers are wounded whenever a follower is destroyed in combat, but it can be caused by events. You can see wounds in the red slashes that appear on their portrait. Four wounds and they are lost forever. Make sure to take care of your people and rest. Oh, well, that's not as bad. I thought we lost them forever straight off the bat. Uh, where are the red slashes at? Oh, there they are right there. Okay. All right. I'm all right with that. I can live with That's actually far more generous than I thought the game was going to be. And so you know what? Not going to stress on it. Not going to stress on it. Let's go ahead and leave. I should have taken the food up front. That's what I should have done. I can travel back to there and we can find trade goods at the crossroads. Let's go ahead and do that because I'd like to sell some batteries and buy some new cards. So, All right. So after we made camp, we found an old shack nearby. When we searched it, we found some valuables. We got some plant fibers and some bones. Let's go ahead and rest on up. And then over here, we've got a crossroads right there. We've got a beast nest. Good rewards, but well defended. Well, we here at the Nerd Castle don't back away from a challenge, so let's do this thing. Uh, let's... A blissful afternoon was interrupted by the sharp warning whistle of an outrider. Directly next to the road were the glistening bodies of a ruster swarm. They just sat on the rocky ground, aligned in a strict rectangular pattern. It was unclear if they were inactive or dormant, or if they could wake up and attack us at any moment. Uh, let's scavenge. Machines look non-responsive, so we got some tools from the wagons to take them apart. The moment we touched one, a vicious signal pierced our ears. A second later, they were attacking. Okay, well, it was worth a try. I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do. If you don't like a card, you can scrap it. Yeah, I was aware of that already. So that thing's got armor. That thing looks pretty badass. And we've got a neural shiv. Not bad. Uh, let's get rid of the warrior monk and try for something a little cheaper. So there it is. We got a holy guard. I'm going to play him up front. Perfect. And we'll end our turn right there. Uh, there's a razor right there. Okay, another razor. It looks like this is going to be some kind of swarm deck, which is a little bit unfortunate. Uh, I can draw a convoy card if I want to right there, but I don't know if that's a wise decision at the moment. I can play a taunt card. We can kind of... Yeah, let's go in hard for right now. We're a little bit behind the draw game, but it's like, what are you going to do about it, you know? Start off with a little bit of pain over there. Do what you gotta do. So Burst Fire is gonna go out, so that's... Ooh. Yikes. That's a big time wipe right there. I didn't know that he had stuff like that. So we got Forbidden Secrets. We got an Enforcer deal two damage to all its neighbor units. So we want this guy to kind of be off and by himself. We don't want him to be next to anybody if we can help it. We take down a drone. The rest seem to evaluate the situation and attempt to withdraw. Uh, let him flee. We can't afford to take too much damage like that. I'm not going to get greedy. So we got a smart rifle. Very cool. Uh, we got some batteries, 31 of them, and some machine parts. Hell yeah. The enemies have faltered before our power. Bucka, 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 bang, tang. Oh, we found some useful equipment. Yeah, let's do this thing. Uh, so I'm going to use the smart rifle right there. It's going to give a shot. Okay. Can I take both smart rifles? I can, and so we got shrapnel rain off of that one. How is this smart rifle any different? So it gives us one shot and two shrapnel rains. Oh, destroy all wounded followers. What does shrapnel rain do? Where is that at? Shrapnel rain. Destroy all wounded followers. My followers or his followers? Hopefully his followers would be my would be my prayer right there. All right. Well, let's continue forward. Uh, we can double back and we can go for, what is that, a camp? A safe place to camp. We don't need that. Let's head on down the road. We'll be good. Uh, we got attacked again by Savage Beasts. It looks like we're going to have some fights on our hands. Let's do this thing. All right, so with our starting hand here, got a Battlefield Medic. I don't think that's really going to help out too much. But we've got Bandit Sapper right there, which is pretty sweet. We got unarmored, or we got armored blow, and we've got reinforced. I'm gonna get rid of both of those and just kind of see what we get. So we got shot right there, and we got lucky shot. Both of those are pretty solid, and I'm more than happy to use those. I'm gonna put down a Sapper for right now. There's two damage to the enemy. Cool. Black scale Garam is down. He's gonna be a little bit further back, which I think means he can't be attacked. That one's going to be right there. They're going to play Scratch right there, which is great, because I was planning on hitting right there, then playing the Medic. So that basically blocked that off before this got any worse. With four right there, we can deal four damage. We can deal six altogether. I'm going to fire a shot right there. Fire a shot right there. And we're going to keep this DPS going. Hopefully, it'll try to retreat. Uh, Jeroen Climber right there, who's actually Rend. That's an expensive little ability he decided to play. Okay, I'm going to put in an Enforcer. 
play something big right here. I don't think it matters. Oh, he deals damage on the turn he spawns. I thought it was okay after he deals damage. Good thing to know. See, there's very there's varying specifics to a lot of these cards that you got to figure out before things get any worse. Uh, we got the ability to end this thing right now. So I'm going to put Holy Strength on him. There it is. And we're just going to finish this thing off. Down they go. Victory for us. We got 26 meat and some hides and furs. If we ever find a place to sell this stuff, I think we'll be in better shape. But for right now, we noticed a strange smell in the air. Eventually we saw the cause. An entire section of forest was on fire. There was a large river between us and the fire, so we could enjoy the wild spectacle of the flames before they burned through the night. Okay, decent enough rest. I guess you gotta take entertainment where you can get it in a world like this. Got combat up in front of us. The last rays of the setting sun... We arrived at a conglomerate of old wagons that were surrounded by piles of bottles and empty plastic barrels. Smoke was rising from the wagon, which sported an array of chimneys. A seedy-looking old man with a bottle in his hand greeted us with a toothless smile, offering us self-made spirits. Why not? We got tons of batteries. Uh, we decided to lift the mood in the caravan by purchasing the alcohol. For a handful of batteries, we received a crate of bottles with the milky and reeking liquid. We made camp later in the day and passed around the bottles. The milky substance had a strong taste, but was mild enough to create a pleasant, relaxed atmosphere. We complimented the old man on the creation and drank through the crate in an evening full of drinking and laughter and much-needed joy. We woke in the morning. We could barely walk. He was nowhere to be found. Cursing our foolishness, we moved on from the distiller. Oh, I thought we would get spirits from that. We lost spirits. Uh, let's go ahead and bust this place up. We're almost at the place we're trying to get to. A blissful afternoon was interrupted by the sharp warning whistle of an outrider. Okay, uh, let's strike first. We couldn't allow such a large force of rusters to suddenly wake up and attack us from the back. Ayla gave the sign to raise hell and obliterate the dormant machines. When the first of the machines were obliterated, the swarm was activated immediately, returning our fire fiercely. Okay, hopefully we did some damage right there. Got armored blow and static damage. Okay. Those are a little expensive, so let's not start out with those. Let me see what I can get out here. We gotta be able to get something better. So we started with shot. Uh, I'm going to take the uh, Wild Hand right here, because that gives me a spawned beast, although it did it in a dumb spot. I would have spawned it right there. That's troublesome. Well, it soaked some of the mana, so I'll take that. He had to make a trade there that I don't think he really wanted to make, and so I can live with it. Let's go with... We've got four mana, so we can't really do anything combo related here. I think it's in our best interest to play something heavy, so that's what I'm going to do. And then, on this side, we will play off of you for that little trade right there. I want her, she can be killed by a bullet right now, which is unfortunate. But, yeah, it's exactly what I figured was going to happen. It's exactly what I figured was going to happen. Let's play a shot right there to get rid of him. And with what we have remaining, it's a bad play, but I'm going to put in the Medic. The Medic's not going to be able to heal anybody right now. But it does give us creature superiority on the field. And so, uh, our lethal mechanical adversaries explode with a loud bang. The remaining swarm stop for a brief moment to evaluate. They withdraw it in a defensive formation. Screw it. Oh, never mind. I accidentally messed up. I wanted to click the other one. We got lumber, a smart rifle, some batteries, and a machine gun. Hell yeah. What can I do with the machine gun? Let's have a look here. We got XP to level up. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we can learn a new card. Yeah, absolutely. Let's do it. Turn over a card here. Uh, turn over a card. So Merciless, destroy all followers with attack 2 or less. That's a really good reset ability. Uh, in general, board control is dictated by resets if you get behind the curve. And so I like resets a lot when I play games like Magic the Gathering. Because it gives you a do-over if you otherwise don't have that option. We can also get Rend, which is 5 to a target follower, which is pretty good. Let's go with Merciless. Um, I think a, a board reset is a good thing to have in your deck at all times. And so there it is. We've leveled up and we've gotten a new deck. Uh, with the smart rifle right there, what does the machine gun do? Full auto and burst fire, but damn, is full auto expensive. That's really expensive. Burst fire is pretty solid, though. What does that do? Two damage to all units in a column? That's not terrible either if they decide to line up on us. We'll lose two shots right there. I think I'll replace this one. We'll go with, yeah, equip that right there. So we've got a machine gun now. I assume that that graphic is just not finished. We'll go to Mineral Springs. All right, so move Atunsa. The warm springs were simply pristine. The heavy mineral smell made the head heavy, but the water was comfortable and soothing. Multiple sets of animal tracks could be found at the spring's shore. Let's follow some tracks. Why not? A group of hunters eventually caught up with the animals and gave us 20 meat. Very nice. 
I'll take that. Uh, my suggestion would be to... Yeah, let's heal our followers. Let's go ahead and do that. Now we can inspect the convoy. I don't think there's anything... Oh, I can recruit new followers too. Yeah, let's recruit some followers. So we've got a Black Star Saboteur. And a Shifty Opportunist. Uh, yeah, recruit them. I like those. Uh, we can start recruiting again, but I think we're a little bit low on food right now, so we may want to avoid that. Is there no way for me to trade over here? I've got so many batteries, and I've got a lot of scrap and whatnot, so I'd be super stoked about unloading some of it. Unless it already did it. Uh, let me take a look at my caravan. Let me see what I have. No, we still... we still have it right there. I wonder how we sell this stuff. So I can dismantle that more than likely for batteries would be my estimate. So I can sell those for batteries whenever there's a shop, but I guess there's no shop here. I mean, it looks like a city to me, but I suppose that's that. I don't see anything around here that says shop. Because I definitely wanted to trade for some food if I could. Uh, yeah, put those guys in the deck, please. We're a little bit heavy on expensive cards, but eh. Oh, well. Uh, we've got some enemies. Now let's shoo them off. We had to get the beasts off the road, so we lit torches and tried to make movement. Uh, they charged us. That's fine, because I need food. I'm okay with a fight right now. Sounds alright to me. I am 100% okay with a fight. Uh, my name is Splattercat. This game is called Nowhere Profit. If you like what you saw so far, let me know in the comments and in the likes. It really does help me out as a channel. It makes things a lot easier for me as a YouTuber. Um, I will see you all later. If you wanted to see more, uh, check out my Patreon. If you wanted to support me, if you wanted to see more, let me know. And if you wanted to see more on stream, Twitch TV slash Splattercat Gaming is where I do my business every single day at 3 o'clock. Same cat time, same cat channel. See y'all later. How do everybody?